It's a beautiful day today, and I don't know why, but I woke up in the mood for some Am I the A-Hole. I know we only just made an episode on Am I the A-Hole, but I feel like we should do another one today. And as it always is, I feel like it's going to be a wonderful time, a wonderful and concerning time. And let's get into it. Enjoy, guys. Am I the a-hole for telling my daughter that if she pays for her sister's college, then I'll stop favoring her with my money? I'll try and make this as clear as possible. My mother had a fund that was supposed to be for both of the grandchildren. She told me multiple times it was for both of the kids. She also informed the girls that they have money. She passed away unexpectedly. My oldest name, Shelly, was the only one on the fund and it is legally hers. She didn't share it with her sister, Grace, and she has a huge head start in life with it. Due to this money, she's been able to go to college debt-free and is going to buy a house soon. My husband and I have been scrambling to give as much money as possible to Grace and she really got screwed over. Even with all of our help, she still needs to take out student loans. Grace is working while in college and she found a student job that gives free housing. The issue is that she needs a car for it. So my husband and I are going to buy her a car because turning down this job will result in a ton of extra debt for her. Shelly found out about us getting the car and is pissed. What? She's upset with us favoring Grace and that she never got a car from us? Oh, get out of here. I pointed out that she doesn't need help financially at all. We argued for a while and I had enough. I told her that if she pays for her sister's college, then I will stop favoring her sister with my money. She called me a jerk and isn't responding. Edit, according to my mother's partner, she had the money together in order to build it up more and was going to split it when my oldest went to college, but she died before that. They are full sisters, same parents. So pretty much what's going on is that your daughter is not splitting the money, even though they know that that's what their grandmother was going to do and what their grandmother wanted. And knowing that they're still not splitting it. Yeah, you're not the a-hole at all, OP. Like the top comment says, not the a-hole. Your oldest daughter was very selfish to not split the money, knowing that it was what her grandmother wanted. It's one thing to keep an inheritance that your family member fully intended to be just for you without sharing it, but this feels very wrong. I think that at least until you've given half that amount to your younger daughter, it is entirely fair. I'd be pretty disappointed in her and it's hard to forgive. I can't imagine this isn't going to destroy a lot of relationships in the family. And OP responded, we'll never be able to give Grace half the amount. It'd be around 200 to 230,000. It won't happen. Maybe when we die, but we have probably 40 years left since we had our kids young. Oh, that's so infuriating. That's so much money. And OP also said in the comments, we have discussed it multiple times. She was 17 when she got her inheritance. It had a block, so I couldn't touch it, which was fine. It was supposed to be for the girls. We thought that she'd just be kind and split it with her sister. She didn't, and it basically messed up her relationship with the family. As she puts it, it's hers legally. I don't need to share. Our other option would be to fight her claim to it, but we didn't have the money for that. She knows that we all disapprove of her choice with it, especially since she knows grandma wanted it shared. Oh my god, OP, your daughter is an a-hole. What the hell is wrong with them? How do they sleep at night? That's actually revolting. Somebody like that doesn't bloody deserve an inheritance. Oh, that's so gross. I can't believe that even though they know that's not what their grandma wanted, that they're happily going to divide their family because they're so selfish. Ew. It doesn't get more a-holy than that. Of course you're not the a-hole, OP. Like this comment says, not the a-hole. Your oldest daughter is a bad person. If everyone including the grandmother's partner knew it was for both granddaughters, but it just wasn't set up correctly while legally she can keep the money, by at least not sharing some of it morally was definitely wrong. The fact that she's debt free and able to buy a house but is still so greedy that she's mad that you guys don't buy her a car as well is crazy. Yeah, that's another thing. Imagine being the grandmother's partner and seeing this bloody entitled granddaughter take all of your partner's money. God, that's so aggravating. And also, the Am I the A-hole post ended by saying she called me a jerk and isn't responding. If I was in this situation, hey daughter who called me a jerk and isn't responding, you're lucky that the family even speaks to you anymore. Like seriously, what a joke. We need to move on. That one's too frustrating. Okay, after reading possibly the most aggravating Am I the A-hole post I've ever read, read ever. Let's read the second one. Am I the a-hole for throwing a tantrum because my child wasn't invited to a child-free wedding? My sister is getting remarried and she wants a very small wedding with only immediate family. Yesterday we got her wedding invitation and to my surprise it said that the wedding is going to be child-free and my child isn't invited. My child is 17 years old going on 18 soon. By the way, my child is the only one under 18 in our family and in the groom's family. So she is the only one that's being excluded. I called my sister and I asked her if she was serious. 
Rose. She said, I'm sorry, but we've decided that we want a child-free wedding. I told her to just say that you want a my child-free wedding and to get over with it because this is exactly what you're doing. We got into an argument and she told me to stop throwing a tantrum and that my child doesn't need to be included in everything. I told her that we won't be attending her wedding and then she called me an a-hole for not supporting her. Yeah, I feel like usually in a situation like this, it'd be the other way around. Like normally in this situation, I feel like it'd be the other way around if they wanted a child-free wedding and they were making sure that a lot of children weren't going to show up. But in this situation, it's different. You're not the a-hole OP. You said that your daughter is the only one that's going to be excluded. And your daughter's 17. It's not like they're five or six years old, which I understand would be the point of having a child-free wedding. So you don't have like a whole bunch of little kids running around. But not only is your daughter not a little kid, and they're obviously not super disruptive or nothing, but they're the only one who's getting excluded. And with that context, I feel like what you said was totally fine. Yeah, like this comment says, that's a weird one. I feel like normally it would be a their wedding, their rule sort of situation. And I'd say grow up and get over it. But this is not that situation. Your grown pretty much child is literally the only one being excluded. I can't even imagine what is probably going through that 17 year old girl's head right now. She's probably wondering why her family doesn't like her. You should definitely talk to her and make sure she knows that some people are just ridiculous about their stupid wedding and that she didn't do anything wrong. Make sure she knows this is not her fault somehow. Yeah, and like the comment under that says, I think a lot of the your wedding, your rule situations are cases where the bride and groom are a-holes, but they get away with it because of that attitude. Well, yeah, there's definitely cases of that. I'm not sure why couples are given passes to do whatever they want with the expectation that they'll be forgiven because it's their special day. People absolutely remember this type of petty BS. Anyway, not the a-hole here. Yeah, and also OP said here, my kid is the quietest, most well-behaved kid in our family, though a lot of family members don't really like her because of how quiet she is. Well, there you go. Not only are they 17, not a bloody six-year-old, but they're also not disruptive. Of course they should go to the wedding. And also OP said in the comments that there were 18 to 21 year olds going. So because OP's daughter is one year younger, well not even that, like half a year younger than 18, they're technically not allowed to go. Yeah, you being upset about this is definitely understandable OP. The next one is called, am I the gay hoff for going to my birthday dinner without my husband when he wasn't ready on time? It was my 40 female 40th birthday a few days ago. And we had a reservation for a table at a nice restaurant for 7 p.m. It takes about 20 minutes to drive to the restaurant, so I plan to leave the house at 6.30 p.m. to build in time for traffic and picking up my father. My husband, 43 male, had decided to do a bit of work on his car about half an hour before we had to leave. At 6.30, when the kids and I were waiting by the door, he was still doing it. He hadn't changed and hadn't showered. I told him to quickly get ready, but it got to 6.50 and he still wasn't ready, so I decided to just leave without him. He has a habit of always running late when we have to go out, and he's always the last one to be ready. Normally I can tolerate it since it only sets things back by 10 minutes at the most, but my birthday dinner was important to me and I'd been looking forward to it for weeks. Making us wait for 20 minutes was taking the mick, so I yelled out that we were leaving and left because I didn't want to lose the table since we would have arrived around 7.20. I called the restaurant to let them know we'd be late and luckily we still got our table, but my husband didn't show up at the restaurant and when we got home he was mad at me. Oh the audacity. I told him that I was tired of him not respecting my time and I was making people wait for him and that he could have made his own way to the restaurant. My father agreed with my decision to leave without him, but my kids were a little upset that he wasn't there to have dinner with us. So am I the a-hole? No, of course you're not the a-hole, OP. And the fact that your kids are upset because he wasn't there to have dinner with you, that's not your fault. Obviously, this shouldn't have happened in the first place and it really shows where his priorities are. But also in the situation where your husband is going to be late and you are going to leave, when you left without him, your husband should have got ready as fast as he could and drove to the restaurant and apologized and been there like a little bit late because he's the one who's in the wrong. Literally the last thing he should have done is not went and then been upset at you when you got home. It doesn't even make any sense. And also the fact that he does stuff like this a lot is even more frustrating. Like you'd think that your partner's birthday dinner, 40th birthday dinner, maybe you could be ready on time for that, you know? And even though they were going to be late, when they could have still saved the situation by getting ready super fast and driving over there and apologizing and being like maybe half an hour late maximum but still having a dinner and celebrating your partner's birthday but instead they did the most selfish thing imaginable and they didn't even bother to go and then got upset at you cringe the top comment says not the a-hole you were already late when you left if you waited any longer you wouldn't have even had a table and thus no birthday party when you got home you should have torn him a new one for deliberately trying to sabotage your birthday party put him on the defensive where he should be for his behavior really though when your husband decided to do 
some work on his car? You should have said, no, you're not doing that. You're going upstairs and getting ready to leave with us. No, OP shouldn't even need to say that. They're a fully grown man. It's not OP's child. This was a totally predictable problem. You should stop tolerating his lateness. When you do that, it gets worse, not better. Yeah, and like the comment under it says, it's not on her to mother him. She showed she was not tolerating his behavior by leaving. He should have the awareness and the discipline to not start that project 30 minutes before they had to leave. Yeah, it's not OP's job to make sure that the husband is always doing something right or time managing for their husband. Oh, that's so frustrating. And yeah, of course, you're not the a-hole OP. The next one is called, am I the a-hole for refusing to babysit for a family again because they took advantage of me last time? I, 16 female, am a babysitter and I babysat for a family that I've never babysat for before. They have a baby that's only a couple of months old, a four-year-old boy and a four-year-old girl and are paying me $12 an hour. As you can imagine, they're all on the smaller side and they require lots of attention. When the parents were about to leave, their friends came over and dropped off their four-year-old. I'm not getting paid extra and this was not communicated with me ahead of time. The parents brought her to me and said that she goes to bed at the same time as the others and gave me a quick smile before leaving. Oh no, that's not okay. I babysat the kids for six hours. I was wondering if I should bring it up to the parents or should I just let it go since it's only one extra kid. It just seems unfair that there was no communication to me about it and I'm supposed to feed this extra kid and get her ready for bed and keep her entertained and put her to sleep. In the end, I decided to do nothing about it and I told myself that it wasn't that big of a deal. My parents and friends have since told me that I was being taken advantage of. Yeah, definitely. Yesterday, the mother texted me asking if I'd babysit for her kids again while she went out. I declined telling her that I didn't feel comfortable babysitting with her again because she didn't communicate with me last time and I felt blindsided. She snapped back by telling me that I was very rude and it was in the past. She said I should have said something then and that it's my fault for not telling her how I felt. Nah. I really feel bad but my parents told me that she's trying to guilt trip me since I'm only 16 and she thinks that she can. I haven't responded to her messages because I'm unsure if I'm wrong. So am I the a-hole here? No, definitely not OP and they're definitely trying to guilt trip you. They 100% plan to do that. Like you also looking after the other kid definitely wasn't an accident. And yeah, they knew what they were doing. The top comment says not the a-hole. $12 an hour is way too low of a price point. You should have been paid more, especially if you're caring for three kids. In addition to having to babysit for a fourth unexpected child. She's the a-hole for expecting you to babysit another kid and not communicating with you about it. Big no. Do not babysit for it. Do not let her guilt trip you. And do not tolerate her behavior. In the future, you shouldn't even have to justify your reasoning as to why you can't babysit somebody's children. Example, her children in this case. I feel like you should give her the reason of being uncomfortable. Just tell her that you're unavailable and block her number. I would also think about what prices you'd charge for babysitting. I know that some people have a baseline price for one child and then an additional cost for multiple children. Maybe a couple of dollars more added onto the baseline price per child. This is completely up to you. For example, maybe $12 an hour for one child and then maybe a couple of more dollars, 2 to $5 extra per child. Yeah, you're for sure not in the wrong OP. The next one is called, am I the a-hole for going after child support from my ex-wife and her husband? Even though I said I would not after they said they wanted input on how I raised my daughter. My ex-wife Sandy and I got married young, too young. I wasn't done university and she was fresh out of high school. We were pressured by our families. It's a religious thing. We didn't actually even live together until a year and a half later when I finished my degree. I'm not in great shape. I'm not particularly handsome, although my mum says I am. I also spent a lot of time at work my first three years of my career getting a running start. I am ashamed to say that I pretty much neglected Sandy. When we had our daughter, I re-examined my life and I made them a priority. Unfortunately, it was a little bit too late. Sandy left me. It hurt. It hurt even more when she moved on and left our daughter with me. She said that she was still young and that her family and I had taken years of her youth away and now it was her turn to enjoy it. I felt a lot of guilt over what she said. For the record, I didn't particularly want to be married either. I said that I didn't want to hold her back so I would not take child support. We went to court and I got full custody. She got visitation which she only very rarely uses, like four times last year. It's been five years and my daughter and I are doing fine. I have a great job now and I'm able to work from home. I take my daughter to school and I pick her up and I leave my work in my office when we're together. I have also withdrawn from the church that my parents attend. Recently, Sandy has been bugging me about parenting decisions. I told her that I'd raise my daughter as I saw fit. She said that she was her mother and deserved to say. Her husband chimed in that I was not doing a proper job of parenting and that they were considering going back to court for custody. As soon as he mentioned lawyers, I hung up and I called mine. She's a bulldog. She immediately filed for child support, including back child support for the last five years. I've been hearing from everybody that I'm being cruel going after her for money. Full disclosure, I make close to five times their combined income. I don't need their money, but if I can use the law to get a 
to leave us alone, I will. Am I the a-hole? No, you're not the a-hole, OP. Is there maybe a possibility that they know that you make five times more than their combined income? I feel like there's definitely a motivator there. And like the top comment says, this woman abandons her husband and daughter to go enjoy life and now wants to give advice on raising your daughter. I don't think your attorney is out of line for filing for child support and or back support. You're sending a message loud and clear to back off. Chances are the ex hasn't changed that much and is now feeling the heat of having to explain to others why she doesn't share custody with her daughter. I think going in hard like you did was a good move. Keeping with the quarterly visits is good for now or until your ex proves that she's not going to abandon your daughter again. That kind of rejection lasts a lifetime and every little one needs to know that they're worth fighting for. So keep fighting for her. And also like this comment says, I got the vibe they would try to take the kid and get child support money since OP is doing so well. I think they see money. Yeah, and like this comment says, that lawyer is worth whatever you're paying her. Leave it to the courts. That's what they wanted, so that's what they get. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I don't feel like you're being cruel or anything, OP. You're looking out for your daughter. The next one is called, am I the a for leaving the restaurant even though my daughter-in-law hadn't finished eating? I, 58 female, invited everybody in the family out for dinner at a nice restaurant for my husband's 60th. I told everybody about the event a month ago. The guest list also included my daughter, Sarah, 24, and her wife, Elizabeth, 28 female. Elizabeth works in a demanding, stressful, but well-compensated corporate position. She does have a tendency for overworking herself. Unsurprisingly, she was late to the dinner. Sarah said that Beth had cleared her schedule for the day, but there was a last minute issue and she had to leave for work. Elizabeth made it while everybody else was starting dessert. She apologized, gave us a fancy bottle of wine as a gift and sat down. We were all done and ready to go, but Elizabeth hadn't even fully eaten yet. It was getting late, so as people started leaving, my husband and I decided to leave as it was getting late. We didn't wait for Elizabeth to finish her dinner. The next day, I got a call from Sarah saying that it was not okay for us to just leave them by themselves like that. I explained and said that it was getting late, but she insists that we should have stayed. I may be an a-hole here when I said that maybe she needs to take her rose-colored glasses off about Elizabeth. She got upset and hung up the phone. Was I an a-hole? So I don't feel like you're the a-hole for the dinner thing, but you obviously don't like Elizabeth. And the rose-colored glasses comment that you made was definitely an a-hole comment. It feels like there's a lot more to this, but also arriving to dinner when everybody else has already had their main and they're eating dessert, you shouldn't be ordering your main when everybody's about to finish. The top comment says, not the a-hole after the group has eaten the main course. A late arrival has effectively missed dinner and should not expect to order and eat. It was pushy and rude of Elizabeth to expect to eat, let alone have anybody wait for her. Someone in a high corporate position should know that and treat her in-laws better. And also this comment. Yeah, your last comment means that there's more to this that you aren't telling us. They should have ordered dessert. I find it odd that she ordered a meal when you were all on dessert and then expecting you to wait, but I think there's more to this. Yeah, it does definitely feel like that. And guys, on that note, I feel like that's enough for today. We've read some absolutely unbelievably concerning stuff today. That first post that we read, I feel like is probably the most aggravating post I've ever read on Am I the A-Hole. That was something else. And yeah, after everything we've read today, I feel like we should read something wholesome. Don't make me tap the sign. First of all, beautiful Simpsons episode. Just because somebody is older than 25 doesn't mean that they aren't allowed to have interests anymore. Yes, even childish ones. Oh yeah, a million percent. Stuff like this is super frustrating when people think that you can't do that anymore. I'm happy that it's becoming more common for people to, you know, be open about stuff that they like. Whether you're middle-aged and you like watching Spongebob or like whatever it is, if you're interested in it and you enjoy it, what's the issue when you get dressed up and you feel nice? Oh yeah, that's such a good feeling, isn't it? I don't know if I've ever looked this nice. Such a cute little bird. But yeah, definitely. I'm gonna cast a spell to make you cute. Nothing changed because you're already the cutest. Little froggy with a purple hat, you're way too kind. Thank you so much. My dad doing my hairstyle while mum is gone. Me being happy and proud with the outcome. Oh, that's so beautiful. Like, oh, you tried so hard. It's not exactly perfect, but it is to me. That's really cute. My cat learned that the alarm sound means that I wake up and she snuggles on my chest right after. I've been setting my alarm 30 minutes early every day to give her more happy time. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> that is so beautiful. Oh, fine. We'll have more time to cuddle. That's so awesome. It's been such a good episode today. And also the wholesome memes have been super good today. The posts have been terrifying and the wholesome posts have been very wholesome. And I hope you enjoyed, guys. Me when people come over. My cat. Yeah, oh my God. How true is that? Look at my beautiful kitty cat. You all need to see. Thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you had a wonderful time. And if you did and you want to see more Am I the A-Hole episodes, make sure you like and subscribe. And the comment of the day today goes to Curious Confused. When you start saying, and you know what I'm about to say because I say it every single day, I always whisper it to 
myself as well. Or louder if I'm alone. Oh, that's so awesome. Thank you for the support. It means so much to me. And thank you all for the support, guys. I really appreciate it. Already excited for tomorrow's episode. And with that being said, make sure you look after yourself and make sure you have a beautiful, amazing rest of your day. And you know what I'm about to say because I say it every single day. Bye!